with Houdini 21 right around the corner and lots of new things coming to Copernicus, let's take a look at how we can create a tiling setup that is a little bit more straightforward and just works a little bit better than some of the default options inside of COPS. So I'm gonna drop down a cop net. I'm gonna make this part of my utilities release of Humats as well, but you don't need to do that. This is super easy to create yourself and it doesn't take all that long. So let's jump in here and let's just drop down a fractal noise to start off with. And let's look at kind of what we're gonna be doing. So normally if you wanna create some tiling, you can use something like a transform 2D and we can start to scale this down. And you can see that we get some tiling here, but if we start to mess around with this too much, is if I uncheck that, uh, or check the tile visualization there, you can see that we get some tiling issues that start to pop up. So we obviously don't want that to happen, and any time you get off of this scale, you're going to have any sort of those issues. So the other option that you can do is a tile pattern. And if we look here, we have essentially the same thing, but we have these lines in between. We can try to remove this inset, but if I look in here real close, you see we still kind of have that visible, which is not what you want. And this kind of works for some things, but if you have some something that you want to tile, uh, like a fractal noise like this, it's not exactly going to, to work. So what we need to do in order to make this work, and this actually is going to work a little bit faster than any other method, is to drop down a SOP import. We're gonna dive inside and we're going to drop down a grid. We're gonna set this to the XY plane and make it a two by two grid so that it fits within the plane that we work in inside of Copernicus, that negative one to one. And I'm just gonna make the rows and columns like a uh, five by five for now. And what we have right here is basically all we need to make tiling happen. So this is actually like a tile setup just in itself. So we have our, if each one of these was one of those full squares, we just uh, scale it down perfectly, then we would have perfect tiling within this, this uh, grid. So that's what we're gonna do. So we'll drop down and extract centroid. We're gonna set this to run over primitives. And now we have points along the center of each of those primitives that we can copy to. So let's do a stamp points, wire in our geometry to the points, wire in our noise to the stamp zero, and it's not going to work. And that's because we need to make sure that our tiling is set appropriately for our scale. So let's come into our SOP import, let's come to our grid. I'm gonna go ahead and copy our rows and paste our relative references into that columns, just so that as I change this, those are going to be linked properly. And make sure we have that copied, let's jump out, come to our stamp points, and we want to divide the scale by the number of points that we're going to be copying to. So in this case, it's gonna be four. Um, we want to divide that value by one. So one divided by, and then we're going to put a parenthesis, paste relative references, and then we're going to subtract one from that. Now we have perfect tiling, except for we have those lines still, which we'll look at how to get rid of those in just a minute. But first I want to talk about why we need to subtract one. So if we come into our grid here and I look at this grid, we have this five by five. So you would think that that would be referring to the number of primitives that we have, but it is actually referring to the number of edges here. So if I see this is edge one, edge two, edge three, four, and five, and then up and down, we have the same thing, or, you know, yeah, up and down, we have the same thing as well. So we have five edges by five edges, which makes primitives, which is one, two, three, and four primitives. So even though we have five columns and rows, we actually have a grid of four by four primitives. So that's why we're subtracting one. So now if we take a look at our texture again here, you see we have those lines. We can increase this shape edge filter and you can see that they become more prominent. But if I drop them all the way down to zero, they completely disappear. And now we have perfect tiling, which is exactly what we want but we need to package this all up into an HDA so that it works properly with what we need. So let's drop down a null. Let's wire this into the null and then we can select these. Just click the little subnet button 
And we essentially have what we're looking for. So let's give our input a name. We'll call it source or output. We'll call this tiles. And we can dive inside. And there's another thing that we have to do to make this work because we don't want this to only work for mono. We want it to have it work for UVs. And we want it to have it to work for RGB and RGBA as well. Let's go back to mono. Come in here and let's fire in a switch by type, which is the node that is going to allow you to have it automatically detect what input you are giving it and have it work uh, properly. So let's give this an input. Let's make sure that that is set properly. Let's set the source to choice one. And we can jump back out. It's saying it's broken, but let's go ahead and create a digital asset out of this. Let's call this example. And let's just uncheck that type category. Let's click create. And we need to come to this input output. And you can see that we have some different inputs here. So let's click a new signature a couple of times. And it's by default already got mono. Let's call this one mono. Doesn't let you change the default name for there. Does for here. Let's set this to be UV. Let's set this to UV. And we could do this one UV as well. Call this RGB, RGBA. We do RGB and RGBA. And let's make sure that this one is set to RGB and RGBA. And then for this, we want to make sure that these for the outputs are set as well. So RGB or UV, RGB, and RGBA. And now I can click accept, match current definition, and this is going to just work automatically. So we can set this to mono. Let's actually do one other thing, which we forgot to do. Let's come in here, let's dive inside, stop import, let's come to our grid. Actually, before we do that, we need to allow editing of contents. Come to our grid and just select that rows, bring that in here, click accept now. And let's save node type, match current definition. And now we can mess around with this. We get the tiling that we want. Now you may want to actually take this and link it to a parameter and just, um, you know, you take this and subtract one from it, copy that relative reference into our rows here and subtract one from it just so that it, um, gives us the proper number of rows that we have. That's what I did for mine. And now we can come in here. We can set this to be a UV, RGB, RGBA. It's all going to output properly. We can come in here. We can mess around with the tile size. Let's come back, increase the number of rows. Let's not increase the tile size there, sorry. The element size. And you can see how that is going to just tile appropriately. This tile size will actually break it. But you can see that we can output a perfectly tiling noise here or whatever we want to input in here. Like I said, you can change this to whatever signature you want. And that's how you set this up. Now I have my own that I set up. It's exactly the same thing. If I wired this in here, we should have five rows by five rows. So I look between the two. Actually, this one needs to be six, I think. Yep, because I did that subtract one thing. So if we look at these two, they're the exact same. And if I set this to tiling amount of one here, we're going to have the same thing as our error input there, which is what you're you're wanting to have. So anyways, that is how you set that up. It's just a little bit nicer to have this. It works extremely quickly. And it lets you set, you know, the precise amount of tiling that you want without having to, you know, do any sort of math or anything like that after you set this up for one time. So um, hopefully this has helped you out, not only just for creating this, but this is how you go about setting up, you know, an automatic detection of your inputs. And, um, you know, you can set up your different HDAs to, to work exactly how you want them. So anyways... Lots of new stuff coming with Houdini 21. If you haven't seen their sneak peek, they did drop a sneak peek recently. 
you can take a look at that. I also did a video overview of it, going through everything that they showed and then also the end credits and just giving my thoughts and stuff. So if you wanna hear my thoughts on what they've done, then you can check that out as well. Anyways, thank you guys for watching and have a good day.